Uh, but knowing me, knowing you, sorry about that. I was on the phone. Is, I noticed. You, I was thinking about Alan Partridge, knowing me, oh, knowing you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Why do you look at me when you said that? <laughs> There's a little bit it's of a Alan bit in you, isn't there, really? I hope not. It's a bit about, <laughs> only a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm upset now. <laughs> Sorry. That's Sorry. a total I insult. In a comedy way. <laughs> oh, God. You're digging your hole, aren't you? I am going to have You're to, digging yeah, it deeper and making deeper it, and deeper. Making it worse. Uh, in the studio, of course, Beth is here, as ever, as I'm sure you know. And uh, our special guest this week is John Cook with his uh, young lady in the, uh, in the hot seat on the left-hand side of me. You there, John? Yeah, I'm here, Ken. All right, and we got uh, a lady on the, the phone from uh, Malvern, uh, Caroline. Hello there, Caroline. Hi, hello. How are you? All right, great, thank you. You? I'm all right, I'm all right. Once, once Beth's left, I'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass you straight over to Beth. Hello, Caroline. Hi, Beth. Lovely to talk to you today. And I understand you want a general reading. Yes, please, yeah, a little lot of things going on in life at the moment, so a little bit of guidance would be lovely. All right, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hand you over to John to start with, mm -hmm. and John's going to make a connection and give a reading for you, and then as he's doing that, I'm going to have a look at my cards for you after. Okay. All right, then. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Caroline. Hello. You can hear me okay, yes? I can, yes. Good. That's a good start. As I'm connecting on your vibration, I'm aware of a gentleman in spirit who I believe would be connected on your mum's side of the family because he's making me aware there. And I've got either problems with my chest or my breathing or my heart somewhere in the chest area. And I just need this man in order to sort of get a connection to you to try and find out what it is that, uh, that I need to be telling you. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense to you so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Could do, yeah. Good, good, good. It's a good start. Okay, well, what I'm being made aware of at the moment, it, it's that I'm, I'm just being told that you, you're the sort of person you just kind of hesitate before you make a decision. Yeah. That you've been hesitating. You kind of talk yourself out of situations. Yeah. You, you, you make a decision and, and then you change your mind. And instead of following your art, which... I do sort of say to most people you should do. Of course, you have to use your brain as well. You have to work out whether it really is good, but your art can normally guide you. You kind of talk yourself out of this, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. You confuse yourself. You, yeah. It's like your brain it, brain attacks, you know, that sort of... Time, yeah, yeah, that at war with each other. Yeah. <laughs> your art and your brain. And uh, I'm, I'm being... To, is this... I feel it may be something to do with direction in your life. Where are you going now? Yes, yeah, 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 quite it, a bit. Yeah, I don't know whether it's to do with work or what, but it just feels like your direction is, is a bit cloudy at the moment because you thought you were going one way or you, you was pretty sure you was, and now something seems to have changed within you or within the situation, and you're kind of flummoxed. Yes, it's got a lot to do with always about living, the living arrangements. Sorry? It's got a lot to do with like, living arrangements. Okay, the living arrangements at the moment. Okay. OK, I'm just asking the gentleman what he feels, because when I talk about the future things and guidance, it is only guidance, so yeah. you do have to uh, sort of just take it uh, and just see. OK, have you just... It's like as if... Uh, is there somebody moving in or moving out? It's, um, it's to do with a property about buying my ex out. Yeah, because so it says somebody's yeah. moving in or moving out. It's to get my ex, if you like move him, you know, to get him out. Move him out of my life. <laughs> okay, fine. Because I just said somebody's moving in or moving out, but yeah. I felt, yeah, okay. Well, well, what they're telling me is that, well, what I'm being told is that, uh, is he not meeting you halfway? Is he not helping, even though he knows he's, it's best for him to go? Because he feels like he, he's sort of, he's causing problems. Yes, he's, um... He's, he's not playing fair? No, no, he's been a bit difficult. Okay, because I'm, I'm... Okay, well, I think what you've got to do is you've got to tell him straight. Yes. You've got... You've got... Because you're trying to be... You're trying to keep him happy in one way, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you're not going to get anywhere like that because he's kind of... You, you need to tell him why you really feel. Mm. Does, does that make sense to you? Yeah, he's threatening to take me to court, and yeah. I want to talk to him and, and speak yeah. talk you things through. You need to talk to him yeah. and explain it to him and sort it out, mm. and, and and properly. Well, like as as adults, shall I say? Yeah. There's no need for court. There's no need for anybody else to get involved no, with. There isn't, no, there isn't. No, or you can because you, you could make it amicable for both of you. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put. Okay, okay uh, I'm just having a look at the cards for you, Caroline. Okay. 
very interesting what I've got because one of the first cards that comes out to you is the card that says keep the vigil justice will triumph right so it's like just keep going with it because it'll be okay in the end okay. you know and you've got the opportunity card which is underneath that so there will be an opportunity coming to you where you can pull everything together now the interesting card that's here is a card that says explore of the realms and actually it's somebody holding out what i always look at as like an olive branch and i do believe that um your ex there will back down I think he's just he's just angry with everything and he's just yeah. blowing his top a bit. And I think actually after Christmas things will start to come come right for you because you've also got the card of dreams there as well. But that's underneath uh, the card of guidance. So it's really focusing on what you want at the moment. And that's going to really help. You've just got to let it play out in the time it needs to go because you've got the card that says time. You've also got the card that says emerging into grace, which very much is being very spiritually minded yourself. And I think that things are happening and things are going to way that you, going the way that you would like them to go. And I think you've just got to calm down and stop worrying so much, really. Um, I do think, uh, and I look at this, and I see the initial R, and I feel like somebody's coming towards you, and I really want to say the name Rob, Robert. Yes. And I think Robert is going to just come towards you in a very useful and a very helpful way. And I would be aware of that coming in. I think you may well get um, some legal correspondence because uh, I'm seeing a letter drop through onto the mat. But again, I wouldn't let that sort of alarm you too much at this stage because I'm seeing everything coming right. In, I'm looking into February next year and that's when I feel like you've got the weight lifted off your shoulders and you take a big sigh of relief. Okay. So really focus that and enjoy enjoy your Christmas. Okay. Okay. So also I've just heard the name Simon. Simon. Yes. So I need to pass that on as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, so just remember those things. But enjoy your Christmas. Just breathe out because the lovely card of Keep the Vigil, Justice Will Triumph is there for you. Oh, thank you. That's okay, I hope that's helped you, Caroline. Yes, thank you very much. They normally give me conditions how they passed or what they suffered with. Mm -hmm. And it might be because I don't like it. And they've got a great sense of humour, the spirit world. <laughs> so when they come through and they do this, because they know I'm tittle stomached, and so they'll, they'll show me anatomy and things like that, because they know that I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So they're having a joke with me straight away and so people who think that because you've passed over into the spirit world it's all going to be sort of uh, miserable it's the opposite everybody who comes through from spirit always seems to have a sense of humor they always seem to be cheerful so it's, yeah. it's, it's not doom and gloom it's then. not doom and gloom at all yes sir. that's the way i think people think about it it's all sort of i mean i, I do refer back to it it's like going back to the 1940s 50s uh, black and white movies yeah and it's all like uh, it's always stormy and always the shutters are always crashing on the things that's and the right. rain's coming down and yeah. they have a seance that night and not instead of just doing it on a nice sunny afternoon sitting outside that's right and i've done it on a sunny afternoon sitting outside as well <laughs> <laughs> I prefer it actually. It's, it's much better, is it? Much better. I mean, <laughs> but thanks for letting me. Um, do I use the word practice, demonstrate? What, what terminology do I, I like use? I like the word demonstrate. demonstrate. I think that you're, at, yeah. you're at that point yeah. now. I, I'm, I am looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, you're doing uh, very well. We are going up to the Psychic Rendezvous uh, yes, in March. Yes, next year, that's right. We're going to uh, really have a good time. And I there. think they're going to drop me in it. Good. Probably. Well, yes. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I must admit, I mean, I do like the challenge. You, you've got to like the challenge because it, it, it pushes you, it's how you develop. If you don't get challenged, you won't ever go further. So it's the way to do it. And by the way, we'll be at the Psychic Rendezvous as well, so it should be fun. Oh, it great. Will. But you've got to be passionate about it. And you do come over, Ken, very passionate about it now because you get quite excited. And when I you do. get it right, we can see that, you know, you're really pleased and I you like the feedback freaky. from others. Mm. So Believe it or not, I get freaky about it yeah but um, you've got to have something that it's no good as if oh it's all right something to do it's no good having that oh no. attitude oh God, around no. it you've got to be I would never do you that. know and mm. and it's got to be your passion and that's when you work at your best it's like a job a i couldn't have feeling. a job where it's just like you go yeah. in i have to i have to, I have to want to be there that's right if it, it, what's the point of going in you've got to have a driving force. driving driving force and um producer jane who's uh, just just shot off in the studio too there um a couple of weeks ago i mean i, I hit on a name um james I believe for somebody in uh, Spain who had phoned in. 
Um, yes, you were I doing remember. a reading. Do you remember that you did? Yes, a, you I were do. doing a reading. I do. And uh, I stopped her and spoke to her, and I said, well, "What does James mean to you?" And I, I, as as John can see here, I have, I have no involvement in doing readings on the air. I I just present. I have a bank of screens in front of me, and I tried laughingly as producer James says, trying holding the show together. <laughs> um, but I, I just got this name, James, and something to do with mechanics, etc. And I put it to her, and James was her mechanic in Spain. Amazing, yeah. isn't it? See, you can't, yeah. you know, you cannot make stuff like that up. That's proof. But it, that, you it know, freaked is, me. I mean, you could have a one-off, couldn't you? Yeah. You think, oh, that's a coincidence that I've said that. But when it's time after time after time, and every reading you do, you get stuff like that, then you know there is no way I could know it without well, I, I communicating from another source, you with, know? With John here, we never had much conversation when you came in, did we? No, not at all. Because uh, basically I'm running from one place to another as I'm well, doing yeah. this. Uh, you've seen me, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always feel as I'm being rude when we have guests in, because I never speak to them just before going on air. No. Because I'm, I'm trying to get the show together. Uh, but I prefer it that way if I'm doing a demonstration mm. with uh, Mike Davis. Well, because you, you know, you're not I proving don't want anything input. otherwise. Because no. I think if you've got the information beforehand, that all that's going to do is contribute to your self-doubt. Yeah. So you're better off not knowing anything at all, and then what you come up with when it's right, you know that you've got it from source, mm -hmm. if you like. So that is the best way to be. And I often think, people say to me, well, how do you do readings on the phone? I don't understand how you can do a reading when you haven't got that person actually with you. And I say, well, you've got the voice energy, and sometimes it's easier to do it on the phone because there's no way you could be possibly reading anybody's body language. You can't look at the way that they're dressed to yeah. see perhaps, you know, that may may intimate what job that they've got or what position. And, you know, we all do it. We all look at people and make our minds up about them straight away. You know, within 10 seconds, we form judgments. You've got none of that when you're on the phone. So sometimes, you know, it's easier, I think, you know, very often, not to actually you can't see the person that you're doing the reading for because for your own inner proof you know that you're not reading body language or looking at somebody's facial expression to see if you've got something right or wrong yeah so it's always very good at uh, remembering that as well i find i i, I, I believe it or not i mean i don't know we've all got a little quirks haven't we, we have, yeah I, I take my glasses off <laughs> Yes, I don't know we, why. We said about that because I yeah. think it's because you're you're focusing on your clairvoyant vision, not yeah. your physical vision. And I think you just do that without realising what you're doing. Uh -huh. You know, it's kind of like an automatic thing. Automatic thing for your me to do. Your intuition tells yeah. you to do that. So that's, I always say, whenever you're watching anybody doing a reading, any psychic, any medium, always watch what their hands are doing. Because yeah. really? obviously, when you do their hands are talking sometimes before they're actually speaking. Right. So if you watch what they're doing, you know, often, or even when you're watching somebody on the TV, they'll often uh, hold a part of their body or rub their leg or put the hand on the chest or the head. And that's because they've got a connection with somebody and that could be the way that they've crossed over or they had a mm -hmm. head injury or they had a heart attack yeah. or they've got mobility issues in life. And often they'll be doing that that sort of clairs clairsentience, yeah. what we call it, before they've actually spoken the words. Or they might be holding their hand up above their head, which would be, oh, somebody older than myself, or h putting their hand down lower, which could be a lower generation to myself, it, to, to work with, like, age groups mm -hmm. of people, so you'd know what age you were at. And like we said, oh, on the left, if somebody's on the left, if somebody's on the right... You know, left would be mother side, right, father side, and then we said, oh, somebody behind you. And your hands will very often be pointing in that direction. So I always watch yeah. what a medium's hands is doing. I'd never thought doing. about that. Do you, do you, are you... Um... Very, very much so, yes. When I'm, when I'm working, my hands are all over the place. And, uh, and it is part of the reading. And sometimes I've actually... As a medium, you have to be aware of where your hands go yourself because sometimes, and I've said this to a lot of people in the class, they start wringing their hands or they do things that they don't normally do. Mm -hmm. And it's very often a characteristic of the person that actually is coming through from spirit or yeah. it might even be the person that are reading something they're doing, something that they normally do. They ah. start picking up the characteristics of the person they're reading that's or the person true. that's coming through. And so sometimes that's part of your reading. And also, if you're, you're reading somebody and you get uh, feelings and thoughts that don't, you don't normally get, you have to use all that as well. Even when you're nervous sometimes.